Welcome to episode 12, Okta, symbol O-K-T-A, just like the name. This is episode 13, not 12. Whoops. This chart in the background, that's a tease for later. Enterprise Identity Solutions, Cloud Authentication Authorization. Here's the agenda. A quick analysis of Okta, stock, financials and news, back tests of put selling on Okta, group by implied volatility, analysis and conclusion. If you've never heard of Okta, why am I doing an episode on Okta? I'm considering selling some puts on it, thought I'd better look deeper into it. Take a look at its IV rank on bar chart. So I'm highlighting its line right here and you can see its IV rank is almost 88%. So that means it's pretty close to its 52 week high in implied volatility. Now this has a lot to do with its earnings coming out this Wednesday, November 30th. Its last earnings, it gapped lower. So that explains why the uh, volatility is inflated right now. I've recently become interested in finding stocks of great companies that have taken big falls causing their IV to be abnormally high. My previous back tests on other similar stocks are telling me this might be a good situation for selling puts. Okta may be just such a company. But selling options just before earnings, that's a little risky. Stock price has come down to a level where it may make sense. It's all the way back to 2018 levels. It's the leader in enterprise authentication, a hot area in cloud and cybersecurity. The Yahoo chart in the background shows Okta stock price from April 2017, its IPO, to present. It dipped to almost 20 way back here shortly after its IPO, and then it went all the way up to 290 here in February of 2021. That's a 15 bagger. But recently it's dipped to as low as 45 in early November, right there. That's a reverse six bagger. And it's currently around 50. Here's a chart of its last six months. I've included a link in the description about its last earnings and its precipitous fall right there. It showed signs of slowing growth. Higher interest rates is gonna make it tough to raise capital. Uh, merger challenges with a recent acquisition, Auth0, and management changes. Here's Okta's uh, revenue and earnings on Yahoo Finance. It's showing great revenue growth over the last few years. Its earnings are utterly terrible and getting worse over the last few years. The latest quarters still show really nice revenue growth and maybe they're starting to get their losses under control. Maybe, but they're still losing 200 million a quarter. So here we've jumped back over to bar chart and analyst earnings estimates over the next couple quarters and next couple years. So you can see they think they're still going to be losing money next quarter, the quarter after, next year, and in 2024 they'll still be losing. So it looks like they've got at least a couple billion more cash to burn before they'll turn profitable. So now we're back on Yahoo Finance looking at the statistics tab for Opta. You can see its enterprise value and market cap are about the same now, so they don't have any debt, but they don't have any cash left either. Their price to sales is down to about five now, which doesn't seem too bad for a high growth company like them. Their short float, their short percentage of float is down to is only six percent, so not much chance of a squeeze. 
But they're either going to have to dilute current shareholders by selling more stock, or they're going to have to find some financing for debt at a high interest rate. Yuck and yuck. Two bad options. Is their business recession proof? I kind of think it is. I don't think enterprises are going to want to get rid of their cloud authentication piece. It'll be one of the last things they cut if we get hit by a recession. So now let's move on to backtesting. We'll once again look at the results through the lens of implied volatility. Here's the put slideshow. 14 backtests grouped by IV. IV increasing each slide. Data from April 2017 through August of 22. Here's the first backtest. The lowest IV. See, it did pretty well, but there were no legs beyond 2022 January, so this one missed out on the big downward move. And this one, small profit, caught a little bit of the recent downward trend with the puts. So this one caught more of the downward move lately. Uh, this one did better. The IV's up to 0.46 to 0.48. Oh, each of these back tests have about a thousand legs, by the way. This one did okay. This one made a little profit. This one made a little profit. It really had a nice move back here. Caught a lot of the uptrend with the 52 to 54 IV. This one lost. Caught more of the recent down move. Same with this one. IV's up to 6 to 6.4. Six, lost again. This one lost and then came back up. And looks like, so this one probably came back up after its uh, recent bad earnings report. And once it bottomed, the puts started making money again with the high IV. And same for this one, but it lost just a little. And same for this one. And then here's the highest IV, not 0.93 and higher. And so yeah, it really did well. Right after the recent earnings disaster, you started selling puts right after that. You've uh, made a lot of money. A correction to my previous comments. Um, the back tests don't have data beyond August. So it wouldn't include the recent earnings drop in this area, but it, we, what we would be seeing here is this drop and then this area is where it's done really well with puts after the IV went up. So same concept, just a slightly different area of the chart. So here is the aggregation chart of the 14 back tests you just saw in the slideshow. Take a good look at it. Pause the uh, YouTube if you need to. Stats not on this chart. Total profit loss across all back tests was 3,286. 3, uh, the total legs was 13,830. The average profit loss per leg was they made 24 cents per leg. So put sellers had a small edge in this time frame over uh, put buyers. This one's kind of all over the place, unlike other back tests. Um, the lower IVs made a little bit of money because they missed out mostly on the recent downslope. Uh, the middle ones weren't so lucky. These got kind of got hit hard by the recent way down. And the highest IVs made the most. And as usual, or as always, the average days per leg in each back test showed the exact same pattern of slowly increasing in the low IVs and then decreasing a little more in the high IVs. So once again, the uh, highest IVs did the best. It's kind of a feature of back tests grouping all the highest IV for you, where IV can only go down. 
Okta is currently right around uh, 0.9 IV, right before earnings. So it's right on the border between these two back tests that I'm showing. So it looks like the results of the past are slightly in favor of selling puts right now. I'd classify this as interesting rather than actionable. It really comes down to whether I'd like to own Okta at a put strike a little below the current price. I'm thinking I'll probably wait until after uh, earnings, kind of hope that it spikes down, and then if it does, sell puts at that point. Currently don't have any cybersecurity stocks, so I, this is one that uh, I wouldn't mind owning. I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. Just a look at the data with some opinions. Let me know what you think of this episode. I'm going to do the next episode on something. I'm not sure what. Thanks for watching until the end, and please like and subscribe.